What's up guys, Tinder 1, 2, and 2, and it's list day. Ah yes, list day. And today we are going to be continuing our look at some of the worst monsters in all of the extra deck summoning mechanics. Today is the top 10 worst monsters of the Link mechanic. I know it's been a little while since you guys have seen me. Um, I have been down for a couple of weeks due to the fact I had COVID-19, no joke. So I took some time off from YouTube in order to recover from that whole thing. Thank you YouTube for the loss in subs over the last two weeks. Uh, it's really good to know that uh, you guys care. If you guys are actually interested in that uh, whole fiasco, uh, um, I'll have Ryan stick a link here. I go through the whole thing, talk about my experience, you know, it, I hope it's educational for you guys. Something interesting, something different. It was certainly an exciting thing. I never want to do that again. But anyway, the top 10 worst Link monsters in this game is certainly going to be an interesting one because Links aren't that old. We are only one master rule removed from the introduction of the whole mechanic, so even though we've had a couple of years with them, we still don't have the just sheer amount of them like we do with Xyz and, and Synchros and Fusions. So without further ado, let's look at some of the worst the Blue Boys had to offer. Number 10 is Arcana Extra Joker. Just like the Sunday, it's sweet. This Link 3 Light Warrior monster has the following effect. It is made of three warrior monsters with different names. Not 2+, plus, not 1+, plus, 3. Meaning you kind of can't use other Link monsters to make it. And if you are, those Link monsters are either Link 1 or you're wasting material. So, uh, that's not good. But anyway, what does he do? Once per turn, when a spell, trap, or monster effect is activated that targets this card or a card this card points to, you can discard the same type of card that was, uh, that you're trying to chain to. So if your opponent played a spell that targets, you can discard a spell. If your opponent used a monster effect, you can discard a monster so forth. You negate that activation. Uh, it doesn't destroy it. It just it just negates it. For spells and traps, that's just as effective as destroying in those cases because they just go to grave anyway, but it's against those monster effects that this is a little annoying. Now, his protection effect is okay, but he does also have a second ability, where if he's killed by battle, you can special summon a normal warrior level 4 monster from your deck, and you can add one level 4 warrior monster from your deck to your hand. That one does not need to be a normal monster, however. I guess that's neat because it mitigates the advantage you lost for summoning the stupid thing. However, it is destroyed by battle effect, which is probably the worst way to get an effect ever. I wish those motorcycles would go away. Now you might say, hey, Dave, it's got a negation. That's pretty solid. No, yeah, except for the fact that when you realize that this thing is just a more restrictive, less good decode talker, you start realizing why this card is on the list. It's harder to make, requires a specific discard, Decode Talker is probably easier to use and easier to make in pretty much every single instance. And Decode Talker will probably get an attack boost that makes it comparable to this thing's power. So even the fact that they have despair and attack powers isn't even a particularly good advantage for this thing. And no one plays Decode Talker, so you would never play this. <laughs> However, its effect isn't the worst thing in the world, so it's number 10. Number 9 is Agave Dragon. <laughs> This Link 4 Earth Worm has the following effect. Two plus effect monsters, except tokens. Okay, that means you can at least make it with other Link monsters that are like Link 2 and stuff. That's nice. If this card is Link Summoned, apply these effects in sequence, skipping the ones that you can't actually use. That's a strange effect, but okay. What are these effects? Depending on the type of monster that you have in your graveyard, you can do all of this stuff. Inflict 100 damage to your opponent's life points for every dragon you have in the grave. This card gains 200 attack for each dinosaur. Your opponent's monsters lose 300 attack for each sea serpent. You gain 400 life points for each worm. As interesting as this effect is, sadly, Mariachi Dragon is pretty bad. Konami really should apologize for this. The time for apologies is not mass. However, the time to die is not right now, you f***ing beat that game! Having them get different effects depending on the types of monsters you have in your graveyard is actually kind of a neat idea. However, every single one of these effects is decidedly underwhelming. Raising your life points or hurting your opponent's life points for a mediocre amount is, uh, bad. And reducing your opponent's attack power while raising this thing's attack power are also just super underwhelming. And the amount of attack you are raising or lowering as well as the amount of life points you are raising and lowering are not a lot. So not only are the effects not very good, they're not very good in a very small amount. All tied to a 
Link 4. Which means that uh, you get all these wonderfully underwhelming effects tied to something that is at its core inherently a minus three. Wow. At least it has 3k attack. <laughs> Number 8 is Recovery Sorcerer. This Link to Light Cybers monster has the following effect. Two Cybers monsters. He's not generic. Although, Cybers decks tend to be pretty good at making Link monsters, so it's not the worst thing in the world. It's almost like they were meant to do that. Quick effect. Oh! You can target one Cybers Link monster in your graveyard that was destroyed this turn, special summon it, negate its effects, and kill it during the end phase again. Okay, I get what you're trying to do here. Uh, it's, it's basically letting you extend and go even further beyond. <laughs> Without running the risk of that monster that you're getting back from the grave actually having impactful effects. But uh, the fact that it requires you to resurrect a monster that was destroyed this turn drastically reduces this card's utility. Unless, of course, you can somehow destroy the monster yourself, so that way this card is a lot easier to proc, you're going to be finding this thing is just sitting in your extra deck pretty dead. And with like 1500 attack, it's not like you can use it to wall up and then try to block an OTK, because your opponent's just going to ram over this thing first to avoid its effect being used during like a battle phase, to like chump block. Which Link monsters aren't even very good at anyway because they have no defense. <laughs> so I guess it's better than a direct attack, I suppose. Had this just let you resurrect a Link monster from your graveyard, that would have been freaking fantastic. The card would be busted. But the fact the card needs to be destroyed this turn really does make this card extremely specific in its use. Um, which sadly in Yu-Gi-Oh! always seems to mean the card ends up just being bad. Regardless of how good that specific use effect is. <laughs> Isn't this game fun? Number seven is Trickstar Dofendium. I defi defi two plus Trickstar monsters. Man, we're not gonna hit it too much for being not generic because it's a Trickstar Link monster. Of course it's made of Trickstars. Okay, what's it do? Link three light fairy? Okay, sure, why not? When this card declares an attack while pointing to another Trickstar monster, you can target one of your banished Trickstar monsters. Okay. Up to the number of Link monsters your opponent controls. Add them to your hand. This card gains a thousand attack for each card added until the end of the turn. All right. Um, wow. Yeah, uh, that's a lot of, that, that's a, a lot that needs to go right. Number one, this thing needs to be pointing to a Trickstar monster. Number two, you need banished Trickstar monsters. Okay, that's more set up. Number three, your opponent needs Link monsters. Okay, more set up. Four, it's like a Link 3, so it requires a lot of resources to make. What? When would they expect you to resolve this? And in what circumstance? Uh, it just makes big number. And the fact that it starts off at like 2200 attack isn't particularly impressive. So like, again, a lot just needs to go right. And because it's a battle effect, it also means that you can't use it going first. So it has even lim more limited function. When it comes up, would it be clutch to have? Yeah, probably you might be able to OTK or do something cheesy with it. But I think, frankly, you'd be better off just running a fistful of honests or something. And then you can use any any of your monsters for that, and that's not out of your way and stupid. Also, I like the artwork. I like it. Number six is Goki, a solid ogre. Better than a soft ogre. Cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects while it points to a Goki monster. Is Link 3 Earth Warrior has the following effect. Cannot be destroyed by battle or card effect while it points to a Goki monster. Eh, okay, they're a Link spam deck. That's that's probably happening. Once per turn, quick effect, you can target a Goki monster you control in a main monster zone and move it to a zone this card points to. You can only use this once per turn. Best case scenario, this allows you to fix a board state in which you didn't know what you were doing and you link summoned in the improper order and have now clogged your field with a bunch of nonsense. Which means you are playing a card in your extra deck to mitigate your own idiocy. That's not good Yu-Gi-Oh. If anything, it's actually like bad Yu-Gi-Oh compounded into worse Yu-Gi-Oh because you're playing poorly and then you're deck building poorly. Must be fun losing. Now with self-protection's kind of neat. And frankly, if you're making this thing, that's probably all you really care about. 
uh, dragging things into different columns is pretty useless in most cases, especially because, like, it only does other Goki monsters. So you can't do something like shove a Tri-Wizard over or something to get it into a, a more co-linked position or something in order to, like, you know, do some fancy wombo combo. It, no, it, it just really goes to show you that uh, it's pretty hit or miss with Goki's Link monsters, despite the fact the deck itself is a particularly competent Link Spam deck. They just didn't have necessarily a lot of cool things to go into that are in their own archetype which makes no sense. The Goki ain't so brokey, waste of a shoki. <laughs> Master King Archfiend, here we go. Number five is at least interesting bad as opposed to just, just boring bad like a couple of the other ones we've looked at so far. And isn't that really what all these lists are about? Two fiend monsters. Okay, sure. It's one of those, it's one of those Link Brains pack, Link 2 legacy monster support things. Sure. What do? Once per turn, during your standby phase, pay 500 life points or destroy this card. It's one of them arch fiends, ain't it? Once per chain, if you pay life points, you can send one fiend monster from your deck to the graveyard whose attack power equals the amount you paid. That's neat. It's like a foolish burial on legs and it's once per chain. Ah, I mean, you can use it a bunch of times, presumably speaking, but there's still a wall of text left. Once per chain, if a fiend monster is sent to your graveyard, <laughs> which means I think you can chain it to itself. That's interesting. Well, no, you wouldn't chain it to itself. You would activate its second effect as a new chain upon resolution of, of the fur. You know what I mean. You roll a six sided die. Ah, here we go. Do something based on the number. You roll a one. Add that fiend monster you milled to your hand. Okay, that's cool. Two through five, shuffle that shit back in your deck. <laughs> Six, special summon it. Wow, oh, nice. That means that you have a 33% uh, chance of going plus one. That's cool. Now, the interesting thing about the card is that it's clearly one of those chess arch fiends, which is fun at least. That means that, hey, cool, look, Crime is supporting old stuff. They're making it bad, but at least they're printing it. And uh, he can use his effects in response to his own like maintenance cost because it's a pay 500 life points. So, hey, you don't even have to come up with a convoluted way of paying life points. Except when you realize like the only viable targets for this thing are like Plunder Patrol, Bluebeard, and Decatron. Neither of those want to just be dumped to your graveyard, really. So, which means you have to rely on its 33% chance of getting those cards to a position where you'd actually like them to be. Okay, so maybe using his own maintenance cost isn't the best thing. Well, well now you're adding just more stuff into the mix. Now you have to pay life points somewhere else. Ah, there you go, you played in DDDs. The more I speak, the more I realize that any way to make this card work is an absolute convoluted mess based upon RNG. Hey, at least it's a cool idea. That's a thing. Number four, Bellcat Fighter. I think this is supposed to be a Hellcat, which is a World War II, uh, I believe Marines fighter plane replaced the Wildcat, which had trouble dog fighting the Japanese Zeros over the Pacific. I'm only talking about that because it's far more interesting than the card itself. What makes it a bell cat is there's a bell hanging from his fuselage. G get it? It's a it's a kitty plane. God, this card's dumb. Yep, it's a it's a monster that looks like a plane that summons tokens, and it's somehow. Not a mecha phantom beast, nor is the token, because that would be good. Link 3 Wind Machine. At least the typing's nice. Link 3's pretty rough. 2,000 attack. Wow, that sucks. It's incredibly disrespectful. Its arrows are okay. When this card destroys opponent's monster by battle, you can special summon one, oh, what are these things called? Bellcat tokens. 2k attack and defense. In defense position. Cute. Okay, so there's a lot going on here, and it's all really, really bad. It's a Link 3, requiring three monsters to make it, one of them being a token, meaning it's not generic, and uh, it's a neg 2 in order to create the monster. That sucks. And what do you get for it? 2,000 attack. Nice. And you know what kind of effect they gave it? A when you can, meaning, and potentially, depending on the game state, this thing could miss timing. Granted, this would happen at the end of the damage, step so there's not a lot going on during then that will probably get in the effects way to cause it to miss timing however uh it has the potential and that is really dumb not only that but uh they made it have to kill stuff by battle and gave it a crappy attack power for a link three so it's like what are you what are you trying what are you killing with this 
Also, you can summon a token in defense position in the middle of your battle phase. So you can't even use the token to continue your offensive. So you need to go to main phase two to make another Bellcat fighter? I don't know what you're supposed to be doing with this stupid thing. Granted, its effect is kinda neat, at least in the sense that it's weird enough that given the right deck, somebody might find a function for it, but it's really clumsy. Requires you to make too much, and I'm positive Mecha Fan Beasts, which are the deck you'd probably be making this thing with, has a lot better options they would rather be making. Number three is Bubba Barber. There's a bunch of people outside her chicken feet hut protesting her to open back up. <laughs> Link to Dark Fiend, what do? 200 attack. At the start of each battle phase, you can target this card or one monster this card points to, banish it until the end phase. You can only use the effect of Bubba Barber once per turn. Okay, it has 200 attack and they gave it a battle phase effect. That's cute. You can't even like link it away and then enter your battle phase. You gotta enter your battle phase with this useless freaking thing stuck in attack position. And all it does is reduce your board presence. They couldn't even give it the common decency of have a forward facing arrow so that you could use it against one of your opponent's problem monsters that are in their extra deck link zone thing. So that you could potentially at least deal with it until the, uh, you know, make it next turn's problem. But nah, it only can work on your own stuff. Why would you want to do that? Maybe your own Jinzo is locking out your own back row because you are playing Jinzo in a trap deck and you're an idiot and you need to turn it off for a little while. And uh, that's the only thing I can think of you'd ever want to do this is if you're playing a deck where you have a monster that has some sort of blanket floodgating effect that you need to remove it temporarily in order to make your plays work. Ah, yes, I could remove my Tetsudo Arat Newman from my field so I can do a bunch of shenanigans in my main phase too. Broke. She is made of just two monsters, completely generic. So her best function is probably just as a generic link too that any deck could use. There's better options for that, but that is a that is a function, I suppose. And her arrows aren't awful for that. And just like Cyframe Lord Omega, the monster you're moving from the field can be placed back into any zone once it returns. Uh, so for field management, that's a thing. Oh god, that is so stupid. Leave it down in the comments below what you think you're supposed to use this thing for, because I'm absolutely at a complete loss. The effect is super weird, so it's at least neat, but it's also completely useless, so I have no idea. Number two is for... Particular Drumkin? Vorticular Manslaughter is a Dark Link 3 dragon with the following effect. Three Dark Dragon Monsters. Ooh, very not generic. Couldn't even give me the two plus, could you? If this card is special summoned, you can draw one card. However, if you resolve this effect for the rest of the turn, unused monster zones cannot be used. Okay, I guess you're supposed to make this thing in rockets, typing and what you make it with. Man, does that deck have better options. I suppose if you make this late into your link combo where you have a bunch of other monsters on board, it's not going to completely ojama yourself. The issue is, it, it requires three monsters, so you're clearing off a majority of your board to make this thing, so odds are pretty good this is pointing at something that you can't use. The arrows it has makes you think it's supposed to kind of go in like the middle of your board. However, when you summon this thing, you're going to be using a bunch of monsters all over the place. So likelihood is that you're, it's going to be pointing at two zones that are now empty that are unused. So you can't continue to link summon, which is the point of making a link monster, especially with horizontal arrows like this. It only has a thousand attack. It's not even a beat stick. Man, that card you drew better have been really good. It's a, it's also a damn good thing that it's optional. That's really bad. Imagine there being a Yu-Gi-Oh card that lets you draw a card and the player is going to actually have to debate whether they'd want to draw a card or not. That's, <laughs> that is, that is some wonky effect. It's a dark day in Yu-Gi-Oh when the advantage is not worth it. It's not how Yu-Gi-Oh works. Honestly, it looks real dumb. <laughs> All right, here we go. Dishonorable mention is Defender of the Labyrinth. Classic Yu-Gi-Oh card retrained into a Link monster. I, that was what they were doing there for a while. Weird thing about this one is it wasn't one of those boosts one and lowers another like Metal Raiders cards. It was like a vanilla monster. So it's a really weird one that they retrained this one as well. Although sure, why not? Probably thinking too much into it. Made of two normal monsters. Okay, cool. Gives those, plays a bunch of vanilla decks, something to make. Not effect monsters you control gain 500 attack. <laughs> so it is like one of those uh, Metal Raider guys, but for 
instead of by attribute, it's just not effect monsters. That's funny, I guess. And effect monsters your opponent controls lose 500 attack. It's exactly one of those things. That's actually really funny. This thing's destroyed by your opponent's card. You can target a, a normal monster in your grave. Special summon it. Sorry, non-effect monster. It matters sometimes. For those in the back, uh, a non-effect monster could be something like a vanilla fusion or gem knight pearl or something where it is, it, there is a possibility that something can be an extra deck monster but has no effect. So it is technically a non-effect monster instead of just saying normal monster because normal monster implies a monster with no effect that is in the main deck, the more you know. And you can only do this once per turn, because of course you can. The card's okay. It's not very good, and it would be landlocked to a deck that is probably bad. Tenny, I guess. At least their field spell's pretty good. However, I don't believe it's bad enough to be on the top 10. I think it's only a dishonorable mention because it's it's not very good, but that's mostly due to the fact that it's stuck in a lackluster deck more than it itself is particularly bad. It's an okay link, too. And if people are playing Mrs. Radiant and Zoos and playing Mistar Boy and Frogs, and yeah, these minor boost uh, Link 2 guys with diagonal arrows are at least functionally decent little Link monsters. So, okay, sure, it serves a function. And I also kind of like the idea of a, a deck based around normal monsters that uses those normal monsters to, to go into Link monsters that have effects. That's kind of fun. Although I, I, I think that if you're making Link monsters out of normal monsters, those Link monsters should be really, really, really powerful to make up for the fact that all the stuff you're making them with don't do anything, so I, that'd be nice, but anyway. Thank you so much guys for watching the video. If you guys want to help support the channel, check out my links down in the description below. I've got links to the Discord, Facebook, and Patreon if you want to get in touch with me, help with the lists, things like that. Or if you want to save some money, you can head over to Metamat's website, use my code TROLLMETA at checkout. You can save 10% off a custom cloth playmat like one of these bad boys. Or if you want to waste your money on expensive cardboard, use my TCG player link in the description below and put off your financial obligations. I am so glad this card is number one because not only is it the worst Link monster in the game, it's one of the weirdest. Dual Link Dragon. Dual Link's Dragon? Yu-Gi-Oh! Dual Links! This card sucks. This is clearly a relic of Master Rule 4, because in Master Rule 5, we don't need this garbage. Although, frankly, you'd have never made this in Master Rule 4 either. This Dark Dragon Link 4 with zero attack power <laughs> has the following effect. Two plus monsters, including a synchro monster. Ew. All right, before we go any further, let me just really... That is a terrible, terrible material. Let's assume the worst case scenario, you need to make this out of four monsters because you don't, you didn't go into any Link 2s or anything previously because that's the best way to illustrate this. It's a Link 4, so you need three effect monsters plus, let's say, Stardust Dragon. Stardust Dragon was made of two monsters, meaning this is essentially a Link 5. A neg 4 to make this thing. And frankly, the synchro monster you, you lost to make this thing was probably serving a better function and probably had attack power. Synchro monsters tend to be good because they're a little complicated to make. See, they're worth it. Funny how those things work. But anyway, during your main phase quick effect, oh, 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 I can't wait. You can banish one power tool monster or one level seven or eight dragon synchro monster from your extra deck. Special summon a dual link dragon token thing, the same type, attribute, level, attack, and defense of the banished synchro monster you just got rid of. If you control one of those dumb tokens, your opponent can't target this thing for attack or with effects. Had this been a Link 2, it might have been actually kind of good because it would have been a decent extender. Sure, you're losing probably a really good synchro monster, but in the middle of a wombo combo, who really cares? You have a whole 15 cards in your extra deck to play whatever the hell you want. You just get rid of one that you're playing in there just for this thing's effect. It gets you a big beater of a token that you can then use to keep going with your links. However, this thing being a link 4, or effectively a link 5, given the cost of the materials it requires to make this stupid thing, likelihood is you're ending your board with this thing and a token, and that's it, because you blew your entire hand in order to make this stupid thing. So like, why didn't he just go into Saruja or something? Because it effectively does the same thing. It's a link 4 that gets you a free guy on board, and also lets you draw a bunch, and... 
stuff. Like, because it's like a, a, a good card. And it has attack power. You could have just gone in the Boral Sword Dragon and won. There are a lot of things you could have done that aren't this. The only thing that's cool about the card is that its effect is so super strange that, you know what? Kind of, kind of fun, I guess. What's the strongest thing you can make with this? It's a 3k beater. The best thing you can do is banish like a Beals and make a 3k beater. Oh, that's not even big number. If you wanted a big token, you were better off just trying to bait your opponents to beer. <laughs> what an odd card. Anyway guys, that was the top 10 worst Link monsters in the game. Hope you enjoyed it. As far as my first uh, first video back in a couple of weeks, uh, well, real video at least. The last one was kind of a vlog. I don't know if that really counts. I, I hope this isn't a nightmare to edit because I'm a little out of practice and uh, I'm still recovering. Still got some, some lungage going, so... <sighs> It's a lot of talking. Anyway, guys, let me know in the comments below what you guys think. And remember, if you don't troll the meta who will, uh, I'll see you guys next time for the uh, where we pick back up with my top 10 best cards in the main series of the games. Well, 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 look who's back. Be sure to subscribe to the channel this time, or I will use my Millennium Rod and do devious, devious things to you. Evil things. Also, by the way, Bakora never did ever get that milk. I did get the bloody milk. No, you didn't. This is oat milk. It's not real milk. It needs to come from a cow. How do you milk an oat?